This update is huge, and this video is packed with information, so let me start off by showing you gameplay of all 40 mutations. Now, you get these mutations from monster eggs, and they're actually pretty common to unlock, so you're going to be getting a lot of them quickly. Once you unlock them, you'll see your brawler have a green glow around them on the selection screen, and here is what each mutation does. For Shelly's mutation, her shotgun fires twice. Nita's super will actually summon two bears, which is kind of crazy in itself, but you can actually hypercharge a mutated super. So in this case, there would be two hypercharged bruises on the field at the same time, and it's kind of crazy. For Colt, his basic attack will actually destroy walls, as well as the range on his normal shot is absolutely bonkers. One of the strongest mutations actually goes to Brock. He will fire two shots out at the same time, side by side with his standard shot, and it it is really OP. Now as crazy as Brock's is, and it's good, there are some that are equally as good, if not better, and I'll show you the rest of them after I tell you about today's sponsor. 1v1.lol is a hyper battle royale mobile game that you can play anytime, anywhere. There are some really cool twists that make this game feel fresh and fun, like champions that have unique abilities that can also build. It's a fast paced battle royale that doesn't require a huge time commitment. Games are quick and you can get into the action straight away. You have different game modes to choose from, but the choice doesn't stop there because you have a multitude of different champions that all have unique abilities to use so you can pick the one that fits your playstyle. There's also a ton of different weapons to get and upgrade from the standard pistol and shotgun to flamethrowers and sniper rifles. Just by playing, you'll be able to upgrade your weapons and champions to make them stronger, enhance their abilities, as well as their damage. Damage. You can build and battle to reach a place, get the advantage on an enemy, or just to protect yourself. You can play it anywhere with anyone. It's for all levels, from beginner to pro. 1v1.lol is free to play on both mobile and PC through Steam. Go download it right now through the link in the description or from the app stores and hop into battle right away. Big thanks to 1v1.lol for sponsoring today's video. Now with El Primo, his super travels really fast, as well as that supercharge rate is increased along with his health. For Poco, whenever he's hit, he heals himself and his nearby teammates over time, although the tick is very small, but you do get more healing for every little small projectile, so like against Rico or a Pam. For Rosa, she spawns bushes around her whenever she uses her super and quite a lot of bush. Rosa's is pretty decent, but Tick's is actually kind of cracked because for his super, you will spawn not one, not two, but three tick heads at the same time that chase down your enemies and just absolutely wreck them. It's it's actually kind of crazy. Next up, we have Rico, and all of his projectiles will bounce way more than normal. Like, use your super and your gadget, and you will have your balls bouncing everywhere. Didn't mean it like that. For Penny, whenever she uses her super, she throws down not one, but two mortars at the same time. For Carl, his basic attack gets a little bit faster, which is kind of blah, it's whatever, but his super... Holy bonkers. The speed at which he travels in his super is literally insane. And speaking of crazy, Bo's mutation allows him to put down unlimited mines. I could barely dodge three to begin with, much less 40 of them in the middle of a showdown map. For Stu, his super is nonstop, 100% always charged, so you can just glide across the map. Piper is always deadly, but with her mutation, it gets even crazier because she fires not one, but two of her shots at the same time. Now for Pam, her mutation allows her to have unlimited ammo, which is going to be super annoying. Now for Frank, he gains movement speed, extra health, and his standard attack breaks walls. Now if you know B's gadget, Rattled Hive, her mutation is similar because it fires off one of those little rattle hive every single time she fires a normal shot. So eventually you've got a bunch of these little rattle hives spinning around you nonstop. If you thought it was hard to dodge Grom super before, well, good luck with his new one because it looks like this. When Bonnie is in her cannon form, she fires not one, but three shots in this wide arc pattern, which is kind of hard to know exactly where they're going to be going and hit somebody, but I'm sure you'll get some extra damage or you can get up close to something and all three will hit as well as whenever she uses her super, she will stun anybody she lands on. For Gale, he summons a whole wall of snowballs every shot. It's actually pretty insane. Combine this with his slow star power and it is going to be oppressive. 
For Belle, her basic attack will split into five different projectiles whenever she hits someone. And our boy the trash can, Ash, is going to summon a thousand little rats whenever he uses his super. So it's not a thousand, but it's a lot, and you can keep cycling those supers, so single shot brawlers, watch out for this one. Lola spawns an additional ego with her super. For Mandy, whenever she fires off a super, it's actually three supers in one. Hanks is pretty interesting because whenever he gets hit, he fires off his super. So when you get brawlers like Rico or Pam firing lots of little projectiles, that super is just nonstop going crazy. Angelo has been one of the best brawlers in the game since he was released, and his mutation is absolutely cracked because he fires not one, not two, but three shots at the same time. And if you get up close to somebody, you can deal massive amounts of damage. Another one that is really good is Max because she has unlimited ammo. You can literally just sit there and spam auto-aim for the entire game and she does a lot of damage. Sprouts is basic, but strong. He fires two shots at the same time every time he fires. For Squeak, every time he uses his super and the big blob splits, those little blobs are no longer little, they're gigantic. Ruffs is basically the same thing as Rico, just less cool. Have you ever wished that Buzz's super would go way further? Well, now it does with his mutation because you can throw it literally from side to side across the map. E's mutation is a little bit weird because whenever she gets hit, she spawns two hatchlings underneath her. However, if they're still attacking you, they pretty much die instantly. So that's kind of weird, but it is going to cause some problems, especially for single shot brawlers. For Janet, whenever she uses her super, she drops more bombs during that super, but it's not just more bombs. It's like carpet bombing the entire field. Now, I don't know how strong Gray's mutation will be, but I know that it's fun because he can have up to six portals active at the same time. Melodies, however, I know is strong because she can have up to five notes spinning around her instead of the normal three. Spike's basic attack will split into twice the amount of projectiles that it does now. For Crow, his basic attack works like a boomerang. He throws out the daggers and they come back to him, which actually increases his damage a lot, but I don't think he's going to be the best in this mode just because some of these other mutations are just way better. For Leon, whenever he uses his super, he will spawn two clones whenever he triggers it which is pretty cool but at the same time everyone's gonna know you used your super so it's not gonna be very sneaky because there's two clones running side by side coming from wherever you just used it however there's no need to be sneaky when you're playing meg and you won't need to be sneaky when you're firing off a trillion shots from her gun hers is absolutely bonkers as well and she is really good in this mutated mode and the last one is for surge whenever he uses his super the first time it takes him to max level so you'll be maxed out almost instantly with surge so those are all of the new mutations these will only be available to play in the modes which have this mutated modifier icon to unlock these mutations you need to open these new monster eggs they're basically like star drops except to open them you swipe them like your plain fruit ninja these eggs upgrade in rarity similar to star drops going from rare all the way up to legendary you can unlock anything from basic progression items like coins power points and credits to cosmetic items like profile icons skins or or even the brand new hypercharged skin if you're extremely lucky. So how do you get monster eggs? Well, the primary way is by winning games in the brand new Godzilla City Smash game mode and collecting them in your egg carton. You also get two per day from daily wins right alongside your star drops. And of course, if you feel like it, you can spend some money in the shop to purchase even more monster eggs. Now, Mortis didn't get a mutation, but he is getting a buff. So let's take a look at the balance change. Changes. There are 31 balance changes, so let's start off with the brawlers getting buffs. Gus is getting a new effect where using his shield will knock back opponents, but it doesn't cause any damage. This, however, will be a great defensive tool for him. Mr. P is getting two buffs. First, his porters will move 20% faster, as well as the porter station itself is getting its hit points increased by 13%. Both of these changes should make the spawners more annoying and harder to get rid of. Mortis is getting not one, but two buffs. His main attack is being increased from 1,880 at max level to 2,000 damage per swipe. And the damage from his gadget combo spinner is also being 
slightly increased. Willow is getting two buffs as well. Both are going to her star powers. The first is going to her obsession star power. When someone is mind controlled, the speed increase that they get from that star power is going to go from 25 up to 33%. Then her love is blind star power, that is being buffed from a 25% reduction of reload speed up to 30%. Barley has been outshined by other throwers for quite a while, so he's getting two buffs. His main attack is getting stronger as well as his super is seeing the same damage increase. Rosa is getting her hypercharge rate increase from 40% up to 50%. And the final buff is going to Janet. She is getting her super damage increase from 1200 at max level up to 1600. Eight brawlers are going to be getting nerfs and two of them are the new brawlers. First off, Angelo is getting a huge nerf to his extra poison damage while he is in his super and that extra damage is being cut by a whopping 50%. The other new brawler, Melody, is getting two nerfs. The shield she gains from her gadget interlude is being decreased from 15% per note at present down to 10%. And then her star power fast beats. The extra speed per note is being reduced from 8% down to 6%. Charlie is getting two nerfs as well. First off, it will take her seven hits to charge her super instead of the six that it is now, as well as her main attack is seeing its range decreased slightly. That being said, she's still going to be very strong. Piper is getting her damage at minimum distance decreased from 23% of her max damage down to 20%. So she's going to do less damage close up than she did before. And speaking of doing less damage, Nani is getting her main attack damage nerfed a bit, although she's still going to deal a lot of damage. Another really strong brawler right now is Cordelius, and he is getting two nerfs as well. The speed at which he charges his super is being reduced by 16%, as well as his main attack is being slightly nerfed. Spike is also getting two nerfs. His main attack is seeing its damage decreased, as well as the projectiles from popping pincushions gadget are also getting the same treatment. Bell is getting her hypercharge rate nerfed from 50% down to 40%, so it's going to take her just a bit longer to build up that hypercharge. There's also some changes that aren't classified as buffs or nerfs by themselves as they are changes or a mix of both buffs and nerfs. First off, Hank Super will now heal him for 50% of his missing health in addition to the normal super that it fires off, which is honestly a really huge buff to his super, but it's not all good for Hank as he's getting his hit points reduced from 11,600 at max level down to 10,800. RT's inline gadget has been completely reworked. Now this gadget instantly charges his super and will allow you to drop your legs and move about and not be stuck until you get your super again as you can just use a gadget, activate your super and go right back to your legs or use it offensively as well. This actually makes this gadget very good and well worth the consideration now. Better than that old trash gadget. Another awesome change here is one that Chuck is going to be getting. Chuck will now be able to place his posts while his dash is available. Basically what that means is you can be inside the dash range and if you hold down and aim your super you can place another post while in range of the post you just put down basically this means that you can be inside your dash range and if you hold down and aim your super you can place another post while in range of the post before used to be you used to have to take a trip around the block and down the corner just to get out of the range to place another post down but that's all changing now now kit is going to get a couple buffs but also a nerf his basic attack is being buffed and along with that his super damage is seeing the same treatment. Now, on the downside, his gadget cardboard box, the stealth duration is being decreased from five seconds down to three seconds. So you're gonna do more damage, but you won't be nearly as sneaky. And then finally, they're fixing an issue that Crow had where his daggers when he was in hypercharge form wouldn't return to him correctly if they hit a wall, and now they will. While those brawlers are getting their numbers tweaked, these next six brawlers are getting brand new hypercharges. I'll show you these hypercharges in order from what I think is the worst up to the best one. First up is Tick. His new hypercharge makes his super go a good amount faster, and when it explodes, it leaves six mines on the ground just like his mine. Mind Mania gadget. The problem here is that when his head explodes, it knocks the enemy back out of range. So with the mines, you're not likely to get any extra damage. Now it does drop the mines if they destroy it before it explodes. So that's not nothing, but I think that this one is just kind of mediocre because it kind of 
takes away part of the hypercharge by actually landing your super. Next up is Nita. Now, don't get me wrong, a super fast Bruce with over 10,000 hit points is nothing to scoff at, but it's probably gonna get targeted down really quickly. And unlike Jesse's turret, Scrappy, it can't attack from a distance. So I do think that this is going to apply some pressure and be useful for sure, but it's just kind of average. For the next one, we have Brock and Man, I was honestly disappointed with this one. I mean, looks wise, it's probably the coolest one of them all, without question, but honestly, it's barely stronger than his normal super due to each rocket only dealing 500 damage. Here's an example. On a high safe, his normal super deals 21% damage, which is actually not bad. However, his hypercharged super only deals 2% more damage. 2%. Bottom line, I think the rockets need to do more damage before it's a truly great one. Next, we have Gene. His hypercharged super gives him three magic hands to pull enemies in, so it's gonna be really hard to dodge, and possibly you might even get more than one target, which might not always be good, but I mean, it looks cool, and it will make his pulls easier to hit, which could swing the game in your direction. Now on to the two that I consider actually really good hypercharges, even if, they're not the most flashy. Max's hypercharged super will give her speed to her teammates even if they aren't right next to her. Actually, they can be across the entire map and they'll still get it. In addition, it gives them 25% charge on their super, which is really, really good. Now, this isn't a damage dealing hypercharge and it's not incredibly flashy, but actually it is really good. Another one that isn't flashy, but I think is amazing is Sandy's. Sandy's hypercharged sandstorm will silence anyone if it lands in it for half of a second, which is honestly more like an interrupt than anything else. But the kicker here is that your entire team will be 20% faster while in the sandstorm. Getting that much movement speed while at the same time being invisible is going to be crushing for the enemy. This one's also not about dealing damage and being flashy, but it's absolutely going to be a game changer when it's used right. And speaking of changing the game, how about in an entirely new game mode? In the next update, we're gonna be getting a special event that you'll be playing to collect monster eggs, and it's called Godzilla City Smash. The goal here is to destroy the opponent's city and not let yours get destroyed. When you spawn in, there's a little floating power-up that turns whoever grabs it into Godzilla. Your team's job is to destroy the buildings on the enemy side and keep the enemy from destroying yours. However, dealing damage to those buildings as a brawler is pretty slow, but there are some tanks scattered around and if you blow them up, they'll take out all the buildings around them, which makes it a lot faster. Godzilla himself walks really slow, but he does deal 4,000 damage per swipe and he has a huge hit pull. For his super, he unleashes a massive amount of damage in a big wide cone. He can also destroy buildings much faster than any player can by themselves. Now with the risk of being the Debbie Downer here, the game mode itself is just kind of, eh, it's, it's not that great. The problem is, is that being Godzilla, just isn't that fun. He's just way too slow and destroying buildings as a brawler is really slow as well. But in all fairness, I am playing against and with bots on the developer's build. So I'm hoping that with real players and mutations, it's gonna be a lot more fun. And it's gonna need to be more fun because you're going to have to play it at least six times every four days to get monster eggs. Every four days, you get a new carton that you fill up with eggs if you win. And if you lose, you get a rare drop that takes the spot of an egg. After you fill up that carton, you get to open up all the rewards and every four days, a new carton appears ready to be filled. Now as a club, you're gonna need to open 1,250 monster eggs to guarantee yourself and your club the Buzz Hypercharge skin. Now there's also some color variations that can be obtained out of monster eggs or a very long and expensive track in the shop. Ouch. But on the bright side, if you don't have Buzz, everyone will be getting him for free when the update drops. That's a free Mythic Brawler if you don't already have him. Which makes sense because you want to use those cool skins with him. And speaking of skins, we have a bunch of new ones in this update. Now I'll show you each one along with their animations and how much they cost. 
For the upcoming Godzilla season, we have five different skins. The Brawl Pass skin for the first season is Mecha Tick, which you will find at the end of the Brawl Pass, and it honestly looks pretty great. But there's also dark and light color variations of it as well if you purchase the Brawl Pass Plus. And if you do plan on getting the Brawl Pass, I would be super thankful if you were to use code LEX in the shop to help support this channel. Seriously, I appreciate you guys a lot. Now the rank skin of the season is going to be Mothra Eve, which of course you can get for free from a rank star drop. And of course it will be a higher chance than some of the other skins this season. Then there is the mythic skin in Mecha Godzilla Nita. Now 199 gems is a lot, but the skin does look great has cool animations and of course turns Bruce into Mecha Kaiju to boot. For the next season in June it will be the Cyber Brawl season and the Brawl Pass skin of that season is Hacker Brock. I really enjoy the shot animations on this one and if you like it as well you can get two color variations from the Brawl Pass Plus with Master Hacker Brock and RGB Hacker Brock. The rank skin of the next season is going to be Glitch Larry and Lori and I personally really love this one. Everything about this one is awesome and with the price tag of free i mean if you get lucky what's not to love now on the cheaper side is b bite this one is a super rare skin and will only cost you 79 gems and for that there's a lot to like the shot animations are great and the model itself looks cool as well this is a really great value for a skin but on the slightly more expensive side, we have the mythic skin Vanguard for Fang. While Fang's in-game animations are always a little bit tough to appreciate because the shots are small, his winning and losing animations here are top notch and that brings the value of the skin up quite a bit. So if you're a Fang fan, this is absolutely a great one to pick up. And then on the very expensive side, we have a new legendary skin with Charlie. Now, if you get this one, of course, you're going to get all of the extra goodies that go along with it, as well as great shot animations, custom winning and losing animations, a special voice to go along with it, and more. Now, it is an expensive skin, but it's a premium one. For the Godzilla event, there will be eight skins, sort of. There's actually five Brock skins. They're all the same. They just have different color variations of the Super Ranger Brock in the red, blue, yellow, pink, and black variations of that skin. The shot animation is pretty cool and slightly creepy because there's like a little tiny Power Ranger Brock that shows up in at the end of the shot. But overall, the skins do look really cool. So pick your favorite color and you can get that one or you might be able to get them out of the monster eggs as well. Then of course, if your club finishes the monster egg event, you will get the Buzz Hypercharged skin for free. However, there are two different color variations of that skin. There is the red Godzilla Buzz and the black Godzilla Buzz. Now the easiest and cheapest way to get these skins is through monster eggs. If you get extremely lucky, you can pull one. We also have some remakes coming to the game as well. First off is Urban Ninja Terror, which is a remake of Street Ninja Terror, but actually cooler. And then Heroin BB is going to get a remake with Gamer BB. This is a mythic skin that will cost you 199 gems, but you're going to get a pin, a player icon, and a spray to go along with the purchase. Plus, the skin itself is pretty dang cool. And speaking of cool, you always want to stay cool during the hot summer months, and that is what these skins aim to do. Now, all three of these skins are only 29 gems, so you're not going to get a bunch of extra stuff with it, but if you like the way Beach Byron, Gallimortis, or Parasol Frank look, then for a low cost of 29 gems, it might be just what the summer ordered. And then we have a Squad Buster Shelly skin that is here to celebrate the soft launch of Squad Busters. It's going to be a mythic skin, has a really cool cartoon vibe, and overall, it's just a really cool skin that is celebrating a brand new game going into soft launch and maybe someday going global. We're we're also getting the first six Power League skins ever released, recolored, and put back into ranked star drop. So you'll get these skins from rank mode if you're lucky. There's some really good ones here, even if they are just recolors of the older skins. We also have two brand new Supercell make skins. The first is Dark Samurai Gene, and I love the look of this one. His hand turns into a whirlwind that brings enemies back in, and his sword splits into bits at the end of his shot. However, that same sword he offers up in shame if he loses. However, I like the other Supercell make skin even better, and that is Nightmare Sandy. I mean, is it creepy? 
Yeah, I mean, just look at that winning animation. But the shots that he has, that black cloud that he throws out there looks so dang cool. And then his super. Sandy always gets the coolest freaking supers, and this one is no exception. So is it going to give you nightmares? I mean, probably. It's supposed to. And it's also supposed to be 149 gems, and it's totally worth it. We're also getting five new true silver and true gold skins for Chuck, Charlie, Willow, Kit, and Miko which just means I need a bunch of more coins to finish off my collection. And then we have a few skins that are being changed. First off, Alley Cat Bull and Rockstar Colt are getting slight changes to their model, but it's nothing insane. However, Frost Queen Amber is becoming a legendary skin. So if you like the Frost Queen Amber skin and you can afford it, Pick it up now before the update and you're going to save yourself a lot of gems. As well as new custom voice lines for the skin. Chill to perfection. Mecha Bow is also getting some new voice lines as well as a full pin set to go along with this skin. Let your spirit soar. And of course, we're going to be getting some new environments for this season as well. These new environments are first off the Godzilla environment, which you've already seen. But also there's the brand new Mad Evil Manor, which is pretty darn awesome. There's a bot that rides around and a Dragon Force stage in the back, which is actually kind of cool since this is Draco's environment and he's a heavy metal guitar player and Dragon Force is actually a metal shred band, very reminiscent of Draco. For sure, there's some inspiration there. We also have a new map rotation coming into the game and some of those ones are new ones designed by the community. And if you've ever wondered how to get your maps in game, well, the best way to do that is actually to head over to the Brawlcraft Discord. It's a great community that has a ton of info on how to actually make really good maps. They're a friendly bunch of people and I'm actually a member there too. You can also join in our map making contest where your map could actually end up in game. They're a really awesome group of people that are interested in map making and more. So there's a link in the description that you can click on to join the Brawlcraft Discord. You can join me over there. You can learn to make some cool maps. Maybe you can even get one of your maps in game. So the new map rotation for this season will include these maps. For Bounty, we're getting Canal Grande, Hideout, Shooting Star, and a brand new map called Color Me Intrigued. In Brawl Ball, we're getting Backyard Bowl, Goalkeeper's Dream, however it has been modified, Retina, Sunny Soccer, Super Beach, Beach Ball, Center Stage, and the best Brawl Ball map in the game, Sneaky Fields is back. For Heist, we're getting Hot Potato, Kaboom Canyon, Safe Zone, and GG Mortuary. Hot Zone will be seeing Ring of Fire, Dueling Beetles, Open Business, and Parallel Plays. For Knockout, we've got Bell's End, Flaring Phoenix, Deep End, Gold Arm Gulch, New Horizons, Out of the Open, and two brand new maps called Between the Rivers and Four Levels. For Wipeout, we're getting Infinite Doom, Quad Damage, Slayer's Paradise, and The Great Open. And then in Showdown, we're getting Cavern Churn, Dark Passage, Double Trouble, Feast or Famine, Rockwall Brawl, Skull Creek, Stormy Plains, and then a brand new map called 5050. And if you want to know what the rank maps of this season are, they're right here on screen. So that's the maps that you're going to be playing this season in ranked mode and in the Brawl Stars Championship. And if you like sneak peeks, well then come back tomorrow because I've got some more waiting for you.